Hi again, I'm Don Baluch, the Construction Technology uh, for Kansas City, Kansas Community College. Today we're going to do part one for rafter layout. Uh, before we can actually lay out a rafter, we have to consider several different factors. When we have a building that we are going to put a rafter on, we have to take into consideration several different points. One point being what is called the span of the building. For an example on this particular exercise, we'll use the span as 24 feet. Okay. The next important factor that we need to know is the run. If I take a line and divide that roof in half, the distance from the ridge to the edge of the building is considered the run. The run is always one half the span. So in this case, our run is 12 feet or 12. So key points that we need to think about, span, run, and rise. The next thing that we've got to consider is the rise. The rise is the diff distance from the top, double top plate to the peak of the building. In order to figure rise, we need to know the slope of the roof. Well, how do you find the slope? Usually on a drawing, it's going to tell you what the slope is or the pitch of the roof is. It will have a symbol on it that looks like that, telling you that this is 12 and this is 6. So what that means is for every foot that we go over this direction, we go up 6 inches. So what these two figures are, are considered unit rise and unit run. This distance is total rise and total run. So to get my total rise, I need to take my total run times the unit rise. So 12 times 6, 72. So we're going to divide that and that is 6. Once you have that figured, then we can go in and figure rafter length, which would be on part 2. This distance is the span of the building. The run is always one half the span. The rise is the distance from the double top plate to the peak of the building. 